Hey everybody, in this video lesson we're going to talk about the relationships between the gas variables that we learned about in the previous video lesson. Those gas variables once again are pressure, volume, and temperature, and number of particles. These gas variable relationships are described using something called gas laws. A gas law is defined as a predictable relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature. We're going to take a close look at pairs of these three gas variables, kind of looking at them two at a time. The first two gas variables that we're going to talk about is the relationship between pressure and volume. Have you ever taken a balloon filled with air and tried to squeeze it between your hands? Have you ever noticed that the gas inside of the balloon kind of pushes back on you? Well, what you're doing there is trying to decrease the volume of the balloon and the pressure inside the balloon increases to push back on you. The relationship between these two variables is as volume decreases or goes down, pressure increases as long as you keep the number of particles inside the container the same. And if volume goes down as pressure goes up, you would suspect that the opposite is true, that the volume increases, the pressure inside would decrease. In this case, it's kind of like creating a vacuum. If you take something and seal it and then you increase the volume, you are basically sucking the air out and creating a vacuum. There is more space inside for the gas particles to bounce around and the pressure inside decreases. These relationships are what we call inverse or indirect relationships. Imagine you have a balloon, as I have in this white circle, and I put five gas particles inside the balloon. Now I'm going to do two things to this balloon. One case, I'm going to squeeze the balloon so that the volume gets smaller, but I'm going to keep the number of particles the same. As you can see, the same number of particles are now in a smaller balloon. And those particles are going to bounce into each other more often, and they're going to bounce into the walls. Remember, pressure is basically when a gas particle hits the wall and bounces off, then it applies pressure to the wall. Well, if you decrease the amount of space that those gas particles can move around in, then you're going to increase the pressure because the particles are going to hit the wall more often. Hit the wall more often means increase in pressure. Now on this other side, I have a balloon that's much larger than the original, but the same five particles are inside the balloon. Now I've expanded the area in which the particles could move around in. By increasing the volume of the balloon, now the same five particles don't bounce into the walls quite as often. And when they don't bounce into the walls quite as often, they don't exert pressure on the container. And so this is the relationship that you, exists between volume and pressure. If you take volume and decrease it, you're going to increase the pressure because the particles have less space to move around in. But if you take a balloon and increase the volume, then you have more room for the particles to move around in, and thus the pressure decreases. Along with being able to explain the relationship between pressure and volume of gases, I'm also going to ask that you understand the graphical relationship between pressure and volume. So let's take a closer look at that. If I set up a graph that looks like this, I have pressure increasing on the vertical axis of the graph. And so as you go up, the pressure increases. And if I graph that versus the volume along the horizontal, where moving to the right, volume increases, and we start to put little dots that represent the pressure and volume of a gas. So let's say I've got a sample of gas, and the volume is very, very low, so the pressure is very, very high. So I start up here like this. Now, as we learned about in the last slide, as volume increases, pressure decreases. And so I'll move out a little bit away from the far left-hand side of the volume line, maybe somewhere in this direction. And because the volume has increased, Reached, the pressure is going to decrease. And so maybe the pressure is down here. Now, if I go and take the volume out a little bit further, the pressure is going to go down a little bit more. And as I finish, I put four data points on this graph. And if I connect the lines, you'll see that the trend is that as volume increases to the right, pressure decreases. And it kind of comes down, not at a straight line, but as a decaying sloped graph. Another way to think of a decaying line is that it levels off, becoming more flat as you go further to the right. You'd be expected to be able to identify the relationship between pressure and volume, not only by words, but also by looking at a graph. Next, we're going to talk about pressure and temperature. Similar to how we talked about volume and pressure, Pressure and temperature also have a relationship between one another that you need to know not only by definition and words, but also by graph. Have you ever taken a sample of gas, 
maybe inside a ball like a basketball or a football and you left it out in the sun and you let the ball heat up in the hot hot sun on a warm summer day and then you went to pick up the ball afterwards have you ever noticed how the pressure changes inside the ball you probably notice that the pressure increases a basketball that's left out in the sun is way more bouncy than one that is at a cooler temperature because in this relationship as temperature goes up pressure goes up and in contrast if temperature goes down the pressure also goes down unlike pressure and volume which was an indirect relationship this relationship is known as a direct or linear relationship it's important to note that when you're talking about temperatures we only discuss temperature when it's in Kelvin and not degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius is convenient to talk about temperatures when you're like talking about water freezing or boiling. But in order to properly compare pressure and temperature, the temperature can never be negative. And that's a problem with the degrees Celsius is that you can go below zero. Below zero is not good. But in the Kelvin scale, zero is as low as you can go. So the temperatures will always be positive. And as long as you have an increase in temperature, you can correspond that to an increase in pressure. Once again, I'm gonna take a sample of gas and I'm gonna put it inside this balloon. But in this time, this balloon does not change volume. We're gonna keep the balloon the same size all the time. And I'm still gonna put five particles inside the balloon. Now I'm gonna warm the balloon up and I'm gonna see that the particles warm up and they start to move faster. And as they move faster, they put more pressure on the inside of the container because they're moving faster they'll bounce off the walls at a faster speed and with more energy and more energy more speed means more collisions more collisions means higher pressure so that seems to make sense on the other hand if i take the same sample of gas and i lower the temperature like i do over here i will take the same five particles but they're traveling much slower speeds and if they're traveling at slower speeds they're not colliding with the container if they're not colliding with the container, they're not applying pressure. When I decrease the amount of collisions by lowering the temperature, the pressure goes down accordingly. Let's take a look once again at what the pressure and temperature look like on a graph. And so I'll start once again with my vertical and horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, once again, I'll put pressure, but along the horizontal this time, I'll put temperature. Now, if I apply what I learned on the last slide to this graph, if I start out at a low temperature, I'm going to have a relatively low pressure. And so I can put a dot kind of down here. When the temperature is close to zero, the pressure is close to zero. If this point is zero for both the temperature and the pressure line. Now if I increase the temperature by moving to the right a little bit, I would expect the pressure to go up. And since it go, pressure goes up with temperature, I can do that again. This time go out a little further along the temperature line and the pressure should go up a little bit further as well. And eventually, you reach this situation where you've got a nice, perfect, straight line where temperature and pressure go up. When temperature goes up, pressure goes up. If you double the temperature, you double the pressure. If you triple the temperature, you triple the pressure because they go up in what we call proportionally. So when pressure and temperature are on a graph, look for a straight line that has a positive slope or points up to the right. If you had pressure and volume, look for a line that kind of goes down to the right and levels off as it gets closer and closer to zero pressure. The last relationship that we're going to talk about is the relationship between volume and temperature. Now, volume and temperature are related in the same way that temperature and pressure are related. Think about a balloon once again, and inside the balloon, you've tied a knot in it so there's no more gas going in or coming out. And you take that balloon and you leave it in the car overnight. And overnight, the temperature gets really, really low. This has happened to me when I was a kid. I forgot a balloon in the car, and I went in the car the next day, and the balloon was all shriveled up and lumpy. Now, I thought maybe some of the air escaped, but in fact, the knot in the balloon meant that the air stayed inside the balloon overnight. But the temperature changed. And as the temperature went down overnight, the volume shrunk, because those, once again, are in a direct linear relationship to one another. As temperature goes down, volume goes down. In the same way, if I take that balloon and I bring it outside and let the air warm it up in the sunshine, the balloon would inflate, but not inflate because I added more air to it, but the volume would go up because the temperature 
went up inside the balloon. Again, this is a direct linear relationship. For the final time, I'm going to put a balloon with five gas particles inside. And instead of changing the temperature to see what happens to the pressure, like I did in the last one, I'm going to change the temperature and see what happens to the volume. And so the air inside gets heated up and the air begins to move faster. And because the balloon is stretchy, it can expand as the gas warms up. As it expands, the volume increases. And so the same five particles are moving faster, but they also have a larger area to move around in. So the pressure stays about the same inside the balloon. But as the temperature goes up, the volume expands. Now looking on the other side, I take the same sample of gas and I put it in the freezer. And so the air inside the balloon cools down and it's not traveling as fast. When it's not traveling as fast, it's not bouncing off the walls of the inside of the balloon quite as hard. If it's not bouncing off the walls of the inside of the balloon quite as hard, the balloon begins to shrink and shrink and shrink and eventually shrivel up. It won't completely go to nothing, but it will be less volume than it started with. And that's because as the temperature goes down, the volume goes down and shrinks so that it maintains the same pressure inside the balloon. So just like the last two relationships with the different variables, I'm going to graph this one once again. And on the vertical, I'm going to have volume. And on the horizontal, I'm going to put temperature. Now thinking back to my last example, when the balloon has a low temperature, meaning it's close to zero, then the volume is also low because those two things are corresponding to one another. A low temperature represents a low volume. Now as the temperature begins to increase, the gas particles move faster and the balloon expands to a higher volume. And so the temperature increases and the volume increases. And I do it one more time where I increase the temperature even more and the volume increases even more. And you get, once again, three dots that lie on a straight line just like that. Once again, as temperature increases, volume increases. Just like if temperature were to decrease, volume would decrease. But again, these are direct and linear in their relationship to one another. So if I double the temperature, that means I double the volume. And if I triple the temperature, I triple the volume. To use the same term that I used in the last relationship, we say that these increase proportionally. Now you know the relationship between the three gas variables. That takes care of this video lesson. Thanks for watching.